Oh, uh, Professor Shoji, um, thank you very much for the very informative uh, lecture on uh, haifu. And uh, may I ask you a few questions uh, concerning the practice of uh, haifu? Um, as I'm actually yes. one of the early users of haifu, I just use it for uh, one year or more and definitely learning it. So what what are the most suitable patients um, that you would consider um, for haifu? Like how big of the tumor size, Gleason score, and the location would you consider? Oh, thank you very much. It's an important question. So in my thinking, the um, high has um, difficulty for the patient uh, who had the um, prostate volume uh, larger than 40 uh, milliliter. And then the um, TZ anterior portion prostate cancer um, is uh, difficult to treat sometimes. Uh, how? What's the distance from the rectum um, in the anterior prostate? Would you think it is too far away? Using sonobra device, um, the limitation of the um, distance from rectum is uh, uh, four centimeter. So maybe almost Asian prostate is no problem to treat. Right. I see. Um, Right, and is there a particular uh, Gleason score or, or or the size? How big is the tumor that you would consider? You know, it's a it's a good case for high food? Oh, I think um, it is the same criteria for other modalities uh, such as cryotherapy or brachytherapy, and uh, regarded uh, as a Gleason score um, for focal therapy. Um, that means the less than um, 4.4, 4 plus 4. Um, okay. Maybe the uh, same, same as, as a uh, treatment modality, I think. Mm. So Gleason 8, you will still treat uh, with high food, right? Um, the, especially small region are uh, less okay. than and the uh, 10 millimeter diameter, um, such a small prostate cancer with Gleason score uh, for purpose goal, um, mm -hmm. is sometimes treated um, for the high food. I see. So if it is a case of Gleason 6 cancer, um, how would you choose yeah. between active surveillance and uh, high food? So it's a very um, difficult question, but um, um, during active surveillance, uh, PSA level, um, the patient uh, who had PSA elevation, um, that's the focal therapy um, treatment target. In addition, the image visible clinically significant cancer with Gleason score uh, 3 plus 3, uh, is also a focal therapy target, I think. Right. So you you need to have a target, um, you know, that you can. You, you need to have the MRI target that you can target before you consider doing that. Uh, uh, doing high food for the patient. Yes. I see. So, how? Um, uh, what is I I know uh, most uh, cases that is eligible for hypo would not be you know that big prostate would be, as, as you mentioned would be less than forty mil prostate. Um, how how often do you do TRLP um, before oh, um, hypo treatment? Um, um that uh, depended on the patient. Um, for high treatment, um, large prostate calcification uh, prevent the treatment. So sometimes we reject. Um, prostatic tissue uh, with um, prostate calcification. Maybe the rate of the trap is uh, around 10% of our procedure. Um, you, you mentioned in, in your study that um, uh, some of the patients have out of field recurrence. Um, so that is probably um, uh, a problem of the imaging, which is the MRI which underdiagnosed the disease and also might be the, the sampling problem. So 
if if you do a fusion biopsy before um, a high flu, um, in which a patient you might consider mm -hmm. high flu, of course, um, how many systematic biopsy cores do you take um, on top of the targeted biopsies? So in a protocol, a 12-core transcranial systematic biopsy was added uh, to the MRI fusion biopsy. So, however, around um, eight or nine percent of the patient had um, selection, um, patient, um, significant prostate cancer um, out of the treated area after treatment. So that's a limitation of the current um, um, imaging and the current um, focus therapy, I think. Right. Um, okay, thank you. Um, in, when, when you treat uh, the patient with HIFU, um, do you now do um, any more whole gland treatment or, or, or you prefer hemigland or even quadrant treatment for, for the HIFU? Yeah, um, now we have no, um, we are no performing the whole gland HIFU uh, no longer uh, anymore. So only focal therapy now. So, so more ablation or Oh, heavy ablation or um, focal ablation. I see. Uh, or perform. I know, see. So how now. how focal are you doing it? Are you how how wide is the margin that you apply to the treatment? I mean the margin. How how big yeah. is, How many millimeters do you take usually? Yes, and that's a very very uh, very difficult question. You know. <laughs> so but uh, maybe <laughs> so at 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 least. At least um, five millimeter margin is needed. At least, at least if five possible, millimeters. Now, if possible, ten millimeter uh, is favorable. So, um, I I'm sorry for the so many questions, but I still have a couple of them uh, because that's exactly my burning question. Because I I do have some of my patients that uh, suffer from acute retention of urine after removal of the polycythemia, oh, yeah. after the high food, mm. which is actually fairly common. Yeah. It's in, I, I see that you remove the polycythemia within a day, but but in my experience mm. in the past, in the first few days, I would say like 30% or even 40% of them actually came back to to have retention. Um, so mm. I, I, I'm i very frustrated with that. So how, how do you deal with that? Or how, how do you prevent the, the retention of urine? Oh, thank you very much, good question. The so preservation of the uh, apex portion of the prostate is very important. If you cannot um, detect clinically uh, significant cancer around the apex portion of the prostate, um, please um, um, preserve the uh, around the apex uh, apex um, area, mm -hmm. so you can prevent uh, mm -hmm. urinary detention. However, a T-cell anterior Portion ablation is uh, uh, has a risk of the urinary retention um, based on our experience. Maybe the swelling of the prostatic uh, tissue uh, would um, place the wrestler very strongly uh, after the TZ anterior portion ablation. Right. So, so you mean? Yeah. Um, uh, I hope I get a answer correct is so you mean uh, if the tumor is near the apex and if or if the or if the high food treatment extends too much to the apex um you the, the retention urine rate will be higher yeah i yes. see thank you so and and i also see that you you do mri for every patient um at two weeks after uh, the high food treatment is that I, I yes. see other protocols usually do it like at least like six months or even twelve months after the treatment? Um, it, it's a two week MRI just for research purpose, or or is it you know do you still do it for clinical cases? Yes, um, the um, then contrast enhanced MRI at two weeks after treatment is a protocol, uh, but um. All patients have uh, no remaining tissue uh, on multiple, uh, on uh, daily contact MRI um, two weeks after treatment. So right. intraoperative uh, real-time ultrasound uh, image guidance is very important. 
um, Doctor, um, do, you, um, do you know the popcorn phenomena um, you are in popcorn, the yeah. Yes, popcorn. Yes. Uh, we love um, seeing the popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So if you uh, if you could popcorn phenomenon you are in the procedure uh, around there um, around there uh, there was there was not um, vascular um, um, on um, contrast and MRI after treatment. So popcorn phenomena uh, is very important uh, during the uh, treatment. I see, I see. Um, I, I, uh, Professor Shuri, I know you're an expert in doing uh, fusion biopsies. Um, when you do the high food, do you, I, I know for Sonoblade, actually they have this uh, fusion guided uh, high food nowadays. Do you do, um, do you use these fusion softwares to help with your high food uh, targeting? Oh, unfortunately in Japan, uh, we had uh, no uh, software of the MRI fusion. Um, guided uh, focal therapy using high food. Um, so um, that's our, uh, it's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I think I think the experience that uh, that you have in, in localizing the lesion would, would, would give you no problem with that. Um, yeah. yeah just just, think, just yeah. a final yeah. Just a final question. I I I actually do have um, sometimes some patients with uh, erectile dysfunction. And, uh, new onset erectile dysfunction after doing the high food. Um, is it is it common in your practice? Uh, erectile um, dysfunction uh, rate was fourteen percent uh, up to twelve months after treatment. Okay, fourteen percent. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Professor Shoji, for and sorry for bombarding you with so many questions. I think we we had a great um, session here to you know to learn a lot more about the high food and. I'm enthusiastic to learn more from you and also from 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 uh, upcoming cases. Um, so thank you very much, very much, uh, Professor Shoji. Thanks for your time and also recording this. Um, you know, almost midnight now. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much.